All right guys, so Tesla just released their service manual and this pretty much confirms that they're moving from three cameras to now just two cameras. Now all this time we were wondering if Tesla was gonna transition from three to two or were they gonna have some additional camera placements anywhere else on the vehicle. And it seems like with this service manual release, they've confirmed really two things here I'm gonna be talking about in this video. Now with some of the recent images shown online, you guys can see that the camera housing still has three placements for cameras. However, if you guys take a look closely here in this image, you'll see that two of them are actual cameras and then the one on the far left side here is just a dummy unit. Now honestly I thought this wouldn't have been the case because Tesla is not the type that would put dummy pieces onto their vehicles but eventually I did find that to be true because of their removal of the lumbar support for the passengers and that was really the first indication to this and they were willing to sacrifice the looks of the vehicle just to remove a part that makes the profitability a little bit higher. Now from my view of it the lumbar support isn't much of an issue because you're rare looking at the bottom of your seats however the front facing cameras is one of those parts where you do look at it regularly this is honestly very cheap and lazy regardless of what anybody else says online I think that they're eventually gonna be transitioning into a housing that better fits the cameras but as of right now they're keeping a dummy on it and they're even indicating it in the service manual calling it a dummy unit now if you want a really fair comparison here this is very comparable to maybe my Honda Civic back in the days where there would be empty slots and empty buttons and this is primarily save for premium versions of the vehicle maybe the touring versions and ultimately what it comes down to is you're gonna have all these spots that you wonder what they are you wonder what their purpose is but in the end you'll figure out that your vehicle doesn't have it and it's just an eyesore overall now the unfortunate thing is the same can't be said for Tesla here because they're making a dummy unit inside the camera housing for their luxury lineup vehicles it's essentially the top of the top vehicles the model S's and the model X's so there's no excuse here only the fact that Tesla has decided for cost-cutting reasons they'd rather just keep the same housing for now instead of updating it all right so moving on from my displeasure of the design and the looks of it let's talk about some of the leaks and things we were expecting from recent documentations now just about a month ago we had a leak from China internal documentation showing that they were transitioning to this two camera instead of three cameras however there has been a couple other details that has been leaked but hasn't been seen on the vehicles itself now I'm not completely sure if it's just hidden behind the housings but there should have been a small fan used to cool down the new sensors it could be that it's just tucked inside the unit there and we're just not able to open it up to take a look at it from the service manuals that they provided us here but maybe eventually somebody is going to open it up and find the small fan module there and this is really beneficial to what it came from the 1.2 megapixel resolution cameras did not really need anything other than passive cooling because it doesn't output that much heat but if you guys compare it to something that's four times the resolution you're gonna expect four times the heat so this is where the five megapixels outputting 2k resolution that is gonna put out so much heat especially when it's running continuous while you're driving the vehicle now if you guys don't believe me and think the cameras somehow are designed differently in Tesla versus maybe Apple take a look at your own iPhone and run it in 4k or even 2k for about five to ten minutes in the heat you'll notice that it heats up to the point where the camera will give you a notification saying that it has to cool down so passive cooling is definitely not going to be working in this scenario especially the camera being placed up at the windshield there and the sun just beaming right down at it the fan really makes sense at this point and I'm not doubting the China leaks at all I think there's some kind of upgrade in terms of the cooling aspect of it now in terms of the fan makes a bunch of noise in the cabin interior I don't know maybe they're gonna use some kind of large fin fans where it's extremely quiet I honestly would expect Tesla to eventually transition over to liquid cooling if they're liquid cooling other parts of the vehicles I don't see why they can't just liquid cool it uh, right up top there with a small tube but honestly that's for the future and everything is going to take incremental steps hopefully this is not going to be an issue for the new cameras in heat but yeah overall I'm very excited to know now that hardware 4 has been placed onto certain vehicles and nothing so far for the model 3 and Y but I'll keep you guys updated as fast as I can as soon as I hear anything about hardware 4 and 3 and Y you guys are going to be the first to know about it so make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and the bell notification if you guys haven't already done so and now let's just briefly go over the radar that's supposedly in the hardware for vehicles right now so it seems like Tesla is going back to the radar system I'm sure there's a thought process to this
this and they weren't just removing radar and making it Tesla vision only. The fact is there needs to be redundancy and if the camera gets blocked in some way and I'm not talking about just regular things that fly into the windshield that can be wiped away. I'm talking about a rock that hits the camera while we're driving on the highway and it blocks the view completely. There needs to be another mechanism that stops the vehicle safely and I'm sure this is where the radar comes in. Now a lot of you guys are probably just thinking the radar is going to be used for the cruise control bringing up to 90 miles per hour and some of the other little features here and there but I think it's very critical as a backup and a safety redundancy feature. The full self-driving computer already has a redundancy node. The cameras have some sort of redundancy. It can drive from the side pillars. I'm sure you guys have seen those videos online where people have duct taped their cameras and it was able to drive off of other cameras at least for a smaller extent of time but that was just all in residential streets. Now I'm guessing that on highways they're not going to be able to do the same things and this is where radar is definitely going to be beneficial in terms of safety and on top of that I talked about how radar is gonna be needed for the new park assist features so as of right now all vehicles being produced do not have ultrasonic sensors and they rely on Tesla vision now Tesla vision hasn't been activated for the park assist so you're not gonna be able to get automatic parking or smart summon they are gonna be replacing it with the occupancy network however I talked about how it's not gonna be as reliable as ultrasonic sensors and a new hardware has to come in and this is where radar is gonna come in to take up all the blind spots but anyways guys, I'll save that for another video again when I get more confirmation. This should wrap it up for this one guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, you know what to do. This is John once again. Peace out.